as I know of is at the uh, those are the trees are there's not many trees in front of me. There's a uh, it looks like an ocean, and I'm on a beach. Okay, very good. And uh, take a look at yourself now. Tell me, what do you see? I uh, see me in a white, kind of a robe type of clothing. And I have bare feet. A white robe and bare feet? Okay. What is your body like? Are you male or female? I'm a female. You're female, okay. I have long blonde hair. Long blonde hair? Okay, what about your face? It's very... Um, it's very young looking and it's, it's, um, it's very, uh, white. It's, which is very white. Very white. Okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, very light skin. Is this, um... Just a pale kind of white or a very unusual kind of white? It's kind of unusual. Okay, what's unusual about it? Because it's so light. What about about your facial features? What do they look like? It's, um, I have a very long face. Long face. More oval, long face. And I look at my face and I see that my eyes are very bright. They're very bright. There's a calmness in my face. A calmness, okay. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what are you doing now? Well, over to the left, I see that there's a gathering, like there's a boat and there's a gathering. And uh, there's a lot of talk over there. I can't hear what they're saying, but they're waving me towards them, telling me to come towards them. Okay, and do you feel like going towards them? I hesitate, and then I decided I will join them. Okay, what are they doing now? What are they doing with this boat? They're they are doing. They're looks like they're fisher fishermen. Fishermen. And they have a net. Are they? How are they dressed? They're dressed. Um, with uh, clothes that aren't really, they're clean, but they're, they're working clothes, you know, for fishermen. They're fishermen. So they're not wearing a robe like you? No. So why are you wearing a robe? I'm wearing a robe because of the... Uh, It's, well, first of all, I'm female, so it's not unusual for me to wear a robe. But what's unusual is uh, is the length of it. I mean, I'm it's it's very long, and um, it's very um, it's very very uh, high quality. High quality. High okay. quality material and it's quite fancy. <clears throat> it's quite fancy. Fancy. Okay, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like an outfit to go fishing in. No, I'm not part of the fishing. So what are you doing there? I was just going to the beach 
and to be in the sun and to kind of go really deep in. My habit is going to the beach to to relax and to speak to beings of another reality. And so it's, it was a little disturbing to see the fishermen because they're no they're usually not there. And uh, so it took me back a little bit. And so they are talking to me and want to know what I am there for because uh, they're not used to me uh, being there and I'm not used to them being there. Uh, we always miss each other for some odd reason. I think they got lost. They and, got lost. Yeah, are they, they? Are they, they not to where? You, they're not from where you are from. No, but they they usually are further uh, at another distant. They usually don't come to this this particular part of the beach. They um, they're trying to find fish that where they've been fishing. They haven't catching many. So they've come to this area to fish. I see. Okay. But now they're moving on, and I'm starting to relax more. And I'm finding my, there's a certain area on the beach that I sit, and I, I go in, I meditate, and I ask for guidance from my, my spiritual counsel. And, so as I leave, I find my spot, and I'm sitting, and I'm asking my counsel to be there, to give me advice, to guide me. So you were talking to your counsel, and then you saw the fishermen? Or? No, I, I didn't get to the, I didn't, was able to, when I came out of the, onto the beach. Right. I, um, to find a place to count, to find my counsel, mm-hmm. or to relate to my counsel, I, I didn't find it right away because I didn't connect to them right away because of the the fishermen, but they have left, and so now I can sit down and connect with my counsel. Okay, I want you to move now to. Um, a short time in the future when you're connecting with your counsel. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one, and be there now. Okay. And what's happening? There's three council members before me. They they are very, uh, what you may call, etheric. Uh, I can see them quite well. You see them with your physical eyes or your third eye? Mm-hmm. My third eye, I guess you would say. Okay. I can't see them with my physical eye. My physical eyes are closed. But I sense their presence. I sense their 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 presence there in front of me. And they have come to give me a very important message. And that this was a time that I needed to receive this particular message. Now, usually I don't have such a, uh, there's usually uh, some time between the time I sit there and the time that my, uh, that the council comes to me, but today they came right away. And they wanted to share with me um, a message about what I am to do, that my life will be changing and that I need to be brave, and that I need to be um, uh, comfortable with what happens next. When they use the word comfort, what they're meaning is to trust and to relax into each and every moment that is being presented to me. And they're also telling me to to uh, be in, in trusting I'm trusting that the messages they give me because they're there to help me is really coming from them. And I have worked with this council for for some time. So 
Uh, they're saying, but now we're asking you to share the information that's being given to you to others and that you will become a very amazing healer, they're telling me, and that you will have many guided spirits come to you who will provide different types of healing to share with other people. Okay. Is there anything else going on in this scene? Well, what they're telling me is that the healings um, at this point is actually you will be healing people. They're not ready to, uh, you're not ready to empower them to heal themselves. But that eventually will happen where once you see the healing that you do happen, you'll go to a different level of healing where you see the possibility of them healing themselves, that you, you will give them um, uh, you will see that they have the ability to heal themselves and that you will not be using these healing, healing techniques on them, they will, they will learn how to heal themselves. You mean without you present? Uh, yes. Okay. But eventually they need some guidance just to love themselves. This is again the key is to love oneself. And by healing them at the beginning, they're, to, they're starting to uh, realize that they are they're beings that are loved, and because they feel this love, they can they can accept the, the healing. But eventually, they'll move to that love of themselves that they will heal themselves. They will see that they didn't need that someone to tell them that they are loved, they will love themselves. It's a process that is very, uh, very evolving and, and, uh, and it leads to people to be uh, courageous to, and I use this phrase very, this is very important, I give them courage to love themselves. It's giving them courage to love themselves. That's a very important phrase. Okay, at this visit, uh, do they say anything else to you that's important? They told me that my life will be protected. There is no one that will harm me because it will not be allowed. It will not be allowed, okay. And very, very good. Yeah, because many people who have shown these techniques have been uh, not well received. But in this case, and the people that will come to him will uh, respect him, and also those who are not respectful of me will not be allowed to come. They will be barred from my presence. Mm -hmm. Come, come to her. You mean, or yeah, come to the lady. Come to okay. Okay, um, I'm going to count now from three to one, and I want you to move now to a scene where you are um, healing someone else and uh, teaching them what you were told you would be able to teach. Mm -hmm. Three, three, two, one, and be there now. And what's going on? I see that I'm in this hut, and it's very, it's near the ocean, and it's very peaceful, and there's, there is this uh, brilliant light around the place. It's like it's a very sacred place. Now, what I see and what people see are two different things. What I mean by that 
is it's very bright. But I don't see that with my eyes. I see that with my my third eye, what you call the third eye. There is this beautiful, beautiful healing energy. And it brings uh, a peacefulness to me, the healer, the woman. And what happens is that there are people coming. I don't have a lot of people come to me. It's not like uh, like a lineup. There's no lineup. But there is people who come to me and they, they, they just sit in this one space and they receive many blessings. They, when they receive a healing, there is something else that goes along. There is an understanding, a deep understanding of why the disease or whatever the, the disease or whatever they come for, why it appeared to them. They see that they had made mistakes and they see that they have that they are, are being forgiven for that mistakes that they have made towards other beings. I want, okay, I want you to look at this, uh, these people now and pick out one person and uh, tell me how they, ha they had a disease or some kind of malady that manifested and where did this, uh, mm -hmm. where did this um, problem come from. Mm -hmm. So pick someone out. There's a young boy that has come to me, and he has a tremendous uh, fungus on his leg, on his left leg. And as he's being healed, he starts crying, and he feels so bad. And what he is discovering is that he has harmed other people in other lifetimes or another person in another lifetime and by uh, actually destroying somebody's leg by, by uh, keep hitting it and keep uh, totally destroying his leg, breaking the bones and uh, ruining the flesh around the bones. And he sees that this was not uh, something that he is pleased with, that he has done. And he's crying and, and, and say, I am so sorry, I am so sorry. And once he sees that and once he acknowledges his mistake, his leg becomes pure. It's, it's, it's actually healthier than it had ever been before in his life. And he is totally healed by that. What happens to the fungus? It just leaves. It is, it is cured. It, it no longer exists. And why was he beating this other person? In that lifetime, he was, he, of course, he was much older. And he was, he was angry at the person and he was taking, uh, the person that he was beating up. He was, he was taking some of his valuables away. He was, he was being, uh, uh, a thief in a sense, but he just, he didn't take things. He brutalized people as they took things. Mm, I see. Okay. And, um, that was total out of anger. And so what, what go into the process that you were able to connect with this energy that allowed this boy to see this other life? How did that happen? It just appeared to him. It was just like, because of the sacredness of the space that the healing's taken place, I sat and I looked at his leg and I drew the energy of the past life to
to his uh, awareness. I see. That right. when somebody comes to me, they have to trust. They have to trust the process. And they have to realize that there may be some pain involved and there may be discomfort in the physical, but also the mental mind and the emotional mind, um, or emotional body. And that, that it is worth the, the discomfort. Now, uh, looking around at this group, tell me where, where are you? Where is this place? This is on an island. Okay, where is this island? The island no longer exists. Where is it now? It was destroyed many thousands of years ago. And would you give a name to this place you lived in? It was on the coast of what you call Atlantis. Atlantis, okay. And um, what were the where where was this island in relation to? Was it was it near any continents that exist today, or some it was, no, or it, continent that no longer exists? Or? Yeah, it was near. It was outside of. Yeah, it was. Uh, not on Atlantis, but it was next to it. Next to Atlantis. Were you part, was this island part of the Atlantis people? You, yes, it okay. was. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to count now from three to one, and I want you to move to another important scene in this life as the, the woman who is a healer. Three, two, one, and be there now. Mm -hmm. And what's happening? Well, what's happening now is that um, I'm not seeing very clearly. Um, it seems like uh, I have done what I needed to do in that I am now ready to transcend out of this form. And that it, it, it was for me, I have completed my task here in this lifetime. There is a documents, I, I don't know how you describe it, but there's documents of my work um, that was written. However, those documents have been destroyed and the physical form. However, those documents are in uh, their energy of those documents still exist and mm -hmm. can be, if you know how to retrieve them, you can receive the message. And many people in this time period are starting to pick up the message. Now, the message was spoken through me, but it, it was written through me, but it is, I, it is, it came to be, came to be by the council. So even though the documents have destroyed, and the message is still there through the energy that I placed in those documents, but it's an etheric form. But just know that that, even though it came through me and it's an etheric form, it wasn't initiated by me. It's a universal knowledge that came to me and is still there. And what will ha what happens when people connect with this energy? They are connected to it. Some people are connected to it, and they are using the energy to heal people. Okay. But I must say this, that the it was a process that I went through during this period of time. So they don't have to start in the level that I started. They can raise, they can go 
into a further level of the of what I brought to the earth that came through me. It's very ancient, and you can't even say it's ancient knowledge. It's universal, eternal knowledge that I just happen to be given the information. Other people can also receive it from the the universe. But what's so interesting about what I gave was the, the end process, so that people don't have the beginning, go through the whole process. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I want you to do now is I want you um, the physical the physical form that is here with me now. I want you to connect with this uh, this this woman. Does she have a name? It's a name that um, I'm going to count now from three to one, mm -hmm. and this knowledge will be given to you. Three, two, and one, and tell me what is the name that you receive? It's Malaysia. Something like Malaysia, okay? Now I want you to connect with the the spirit from this life, from um, of Malaysia, mm -hmm. and um, what can we do now to help Devin with his high blood pressure issue? How can we help him to heal himself? Okay. The process has already begun. He realizes that, um, or he's made the determination that he does not want to take Western medicine. He has got information through uh, a book about using um, essential oils that will help. The, the uh, blessings or the blessings he received from um, his friend his friend is 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 really a big help uh, there's a technique that she will show him and there um, they also he needs to relax more and um, kind of move away from the readings that he's been doing because he needs to calm down it got a little bit too uh, too, too emotional for him. Oh, really? Too intense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what would be good for him to do right now? Just to, just to, uh, it would be helpful if he went back to his writings that he was doing to uh, review his writings right. and to see what else he can add, add to them. He, uh, he does not believe that what he's doing is very important, and yet he sees that he has a different outlook on life through them. But as far as him publishing it, he does not see of any benefit. And at this point, there needs to be more work for it to ever be considered to be published. But there is that possibility of being published. But he needs it would be helpful for him to continue to review the writings and to uh, add to what he's already written. Okay. Okay, I want you to uh, do a breathing exercise now, just clearing your mind. Focus on, focus on breathing in and breathing out deep, deeply, at a slow, gentle pace. And I'm going to um, refer now to something we discussed with your guides, your counsel. And we're going to move now, breathing in, clearing your mind, breathing out. I'm going to count now from three to one. 
And we're going to move now to one of the lives you talked about as an elemental, as a nature spirit. And three, two, one, drifting through time and space. And be there now. Tell me, what, what, do, what do you see? What I am seeing is a very, um, it's a very deep forest. There is a lot of us around, and we, we're very busy beings. We, we are very loving beings, and we, um, I'm very, um, we're very young, very young, um, a little being who has a lot of fun and a lot of joy and just thinks life is very funny in many ways and really plays a lot does not see things so serious. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that he, um, he doesn't, in fact, seriousness isn't really part of his life. And in, 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 in the sense of, he sees life as serious, but, and yet not in the way that he sees it in, in the form he's in now. It's like, it's like he's in the moment, he dances a lot, he can move very quickly from one spot to another, and it's like he, uh, he kind of like goes from one dimension to another very easily, and when he goes to other dimensions, he learns a lot. He sees that there are beings that are much bigger than him, and they're so serious, and they they see he sees them as very um, very uh, sad and very frustrated, and he tries to, in his own way, without being noticed, to bring happiness to them, to bring joy to them and he plays tricks on them so that they feel a little bit happier and he can sneak around and almost whisper in their ear some funny things you know and to bring joy to people and that is his task is to bring joy to people and uh, without any acknowledgement without any awareness a couple of times he got caught and it kind of frightened people and they couldn't figure out what that, what was going on. Who is this little creature? And uh, these sad beings, uh, what, do they have a name? The sad beings? Yeah. The tall ones? The tall ones. The are ones he's trying to help. Like humans, you know, like humans. They're like humans or they are humans? Well, some of them are human. Depends upon where he is, but he can be, you know, on Earth and being around humans. Mm -hmm. um, he usually is areas where there's uh, trees around, you know. He's not into deserts. He's not into cold places. He, he stays around, uh, or he's not in high, he can be high density areas where there's a lot of people, but he usually stays, you know, in very quiet places, you know, like parks or, you know, in, in more nature. Okay, look at yourself now. What do you look like? Well, I I have it's it's um, I'm kind of I'm, I'm small to begin with. How small? I would say. Uh, Two or three feet, not not too high. Um, it, it's like um, more fur, you know. You don't really see much. There is some skin, but it, it's you know, it's more of 
fur around me. Your body is covered with fur? Yeah, kind of. And so no clothing? Occasionally, although that's not necessary. What, what do you mean occasionally? If I'm in an area where I feel it's important, I would, I would, I would, I would have clothes. Okay. What about the face? The face is is uh, uh, somewhat similar to humans in a sense. But the other thing you need to know is that I can change. I can change how I look. Mm -hmm. There's okay. some magic to that. I don't usually change very often, but it's possible if I get in a situation, it's it's it may require me to change. And I can blend in with nature very easily. So what would be another form that you change into? Well, it, it, it would be the same size, but I, I, I would, I, it's like a form that could change and, and blend in with the nature. Okay, so just, just for camouflage. It's more of camouflage and thing. Okay. Um, is there any country now? Okay, continue. You you may hear a whistle here and there, and that would I would I would like the whistle, but the whistle sounds a little different than what the humans hear, or what the humans can create. But there's a kind of a high pitched sound. If you hear that, it may be one of my relatives. Oh, I see. Is there any culture on Earth that has? Um legends about this kind of creature well, more, yeah. more than others which which country uh i would say more in the in the in the um in the eastern uh well uh england would be one england in the continent there, that area there you mean the like united kingdom and ireland yes in that area um also in, in, in South America. South America. Yeah, you don't hear much about that. Okay, and uh, in England, in that area, the, yeah, Br the British, more, the British Isles. What, British Isles. What do they call you? Uh, in, in their legends. In their legend, um, it would be more like uh, a leprechaun type of people. A leprechaun, okay. But not what you hear, there's, you know, as I say, there's a little difference in what is said and what, how I was. Those stories are not very far off in some way, some, I mean, how they look and so forth. Okay, I'm going to count now from three to one, and I want you to go to a scene now where you're having fun uh, with a human, maybe doing a prank, maybe something else, maybe something to uplift their spirit. Whatever you, what you were talking about before. Three, two, and one. And be there now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because I, I see myself, uh, because I can transport myself very easily. Uh, I, I am in a, a, a northern, um, it's not, I wouldn't say they're very long, but a northern state, what you call a state, uh, and it, and it's more like in, uh, uh, Oregon, that area. Um, uh, and I'm visiting because I, I was directed to do that. Directed by whom? By the, uh, what you would call a council, head of a council. Who says we need you here? Council of spirit guides, or like other leprechauns? Well, there are as a council that's directing the leprechauns. So they specialize. They specialize this. Okay. Thing. Yeah, and they said to come into the into that area of, of uh, uh, Oregon or or, uh, or Washington, that area, and there was a family who was. Um, a really beautiful beings who have prayed for help, prayed for for uh, for support. They felt very desolated, and they did not know how to 
continue their lives because they were they were very poor and running out of food and so forth. And so I went there and I, I did uh, some magical stuff. And one of the things that I did was there uh, I placed on their doorstep a letter that told them where to go to receive some uh, honey and that they uh, could uh, start using honey and to make money from the honey. And so um, they saw the note and couldn't figure out where it came from, and they thought it was a prank. So I had to go back and do some more um, magical stuff with them and left some uh, further notes and with a little honey on it so that they would, you know, at least try to see where this honey could possibly be. And they found the, the bees and they realized it was quite a place. It's not noted for having honey and that's why it was so successful because it was not a place where honey normally is found. But that was the beginning. Uh, they felt, they got, uh, their spirits were high, and even though that didn't last very long with the honey, it opened the door for them to have courage and uh, inspirations to see that nature did provide, or the divine did provide help when it was needed. And they got them out of their uh, uh, short-term misery. And they they started to enjoy life. There was a little magical tricks that I did with them, but the, that was the main ones. Um, I, I would uh, put little, little uh, things around their house it wasn't so um, obvious, and they couldn't. They didn't know where it came from, but it wasn't such a big thing that they had to find out. But those little items gave them courage and gave them uh, the belief that yes, things can appear and things can happen, and they really appreciated. And they thank God for the for the blessings. And um, do you have a name in this life? What do your friends call you? The others who are like yourself? Mm -hmm. Peppy. Peppy, okay. What is this time period in Oregon? Well, that is kind of hard to say because in, in that lifetime, I really didn't pay much attention to timing. Right, I understand that, but just when you stepped into time... I would say it was in the in the early 18, or middle 1800s. Middle 1800s. 1850, something like that. 1850, okay, very good. Okay, um, I want you to move now. I'm gonna count from three to one. And I want you to go to a scene where you're having fun with others who are, who are like yourself. Three, two, one, and be there now. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing together? We're all dancing and we're all singing and we're all really rejoicing in, in the beauty of life. And we realize that in doing that, being happy and joyful, it's, it really vibrated throughout the world. When one is happy, it goes out into the universe. And so we we didn't do it for that reasons. We did it because we enjoyed doing it. And we realized and we understood that being doing what we love to do brings happiness. And we always did what we loved to do. And 
we realized and we knew through our understanding that if we're happy, that that changes existence in all levels. Beautiful. Now give me, I want you to listen now, to, listen to the, um, listen to one of the songs. And uh, what is the melody like? Mm -hmm. Can you hum some of the melody? Or, or say, or like say it? What's it sound like? Oh, very good. And when you look, go ahead, mm -hmm. continue. What's interesting is if you listen to some of the Native American songs, there's a similarity in lots of them with the songs that we would sing. It I was see. a chance. We did a lot of songs that sounded like a chant. So like chant, a chant? Chant. Okay. But we didn't consider it as a chant. But the Native Americans took it as that and used it as that. And their chants really brought a new energy into the world. They, they bless the world and bless the earth. They, they love the earth. They understood the earth. And we really honor the Native Americans. It is sad that they have been neglected and been uh, placed in such a uh, uh, way of thinking about them. They are very high beings. But unfortunately, they've lost some of their magic because of their... Uh, a foot down because of the influence mm. of the uh, the Western world. Yes, so, it was a lesson for them also. But uh, whatever that is, I, I don't want to go into that. But I will say that uh, a lot of their drinking, a lot of their uh, the way they uh, look at each other, it's it, it's it's sad because they 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 feel very. Uh, uh, put down a lot and that is a sad thing because they have given so much energy and so much influence to save the world uh, to save the earth um, but they uh, have kind of dropped their uh, that part of their doing or that part of their life now when the Native Americans were thriving uh, what was the relationship between them and beings like yourself? Mm. We acknowledged them and we respected them. And uh, there was uh, not often, but we did connect to a very select few of them and shared our understanding of the earth and they shared their understanding. Um, but we, we didn't really connect with them because really this part of the world, we didn't exist so much. It was more uh, in another, you know, more in the English Isles, as you said. Uh, so it wasn't something that we would connect with them on this part of the, uh, the world. All right. We didn't need to be over here because they were doing the work over here. So we stay pretty much uh, on on, uh, on the other uh, what you call continent. I see. Okay. Uh, you talked before about um, moving between dimensions, right? I'm going to count now from three to one, and I want you to go to a scene where you're moving to another dimension besides uh, Earth, mm -hmm. or normal, what we would consider normal Earth. Mm -hmm. And three, two, and one, and be there now. Well, this is, this is a totally different, uh, what you call planet. Uh, it's, um, we, uh, that is where most, that is where we, most of us reside in this planet. We 
this is what I would call our home base. It wasn't that we intended to be on Earth, but we or spend much time there, but we ended up doing that. Um, and as I say, in a certain part of your world, because we felt the need, um, and we enjoyed it. We enjoyed that. But, and we're the planet that is what we call our home base. Um, it's, it's not a very big planet. It's, and it's very, um, uh, it has water. And it has uh, greenery. The greenery isn't quite like the plants are quite like yours, but there is um, there is that there is different colors, um, vibrant colors that you could see if you had a if your uh, third eye would be higher developed or, uh, or yeah yeah higher developed. Um, our planet is uh, we we respect and love each other. We have no uh, there's no uh, division, and we're very happy, and we very uh, and we work well with each other, and we see each other as is a, a a big family, and um, well, what do you call your home? Mm -hmm. It's not something that you could do. You, know, you would. Um, it's not. A, it's not a, a, a word that you would recognize. We usually use it. We just recognize the vibration. We didn't really name our planet. Mm -hmm. We just. We just. Uh, words are not something that we're. Uh, we. We, our, our thinking isn't quite like yours. We don't use words in a sense. We use um, uh, just our vibration. Um, so it was a little tricky when I went to Earth and, talk, and wrote this little note to, um, to this family in, in the in Northwest, uh, the United States. It was interesting because it was almost like I would have a thought, and it just printed itself on the document, on the piece of paper. It was a very beautiful writing, but um, but that's how we communicate. We didn't do writing. We didn't do. We don't have such things as as your math or th things like that. That is that is something that our particular planet doesn't use. What is your awareness like? And if you don't have thoughts the same way humans have thoughts? Our thoughts are very... Uh, well, one thing I would say is that we don't, we don't have fear. We don't have fear. And that was a shock when I, when I visited, to, visited the Earth, the fear that exists here on, on your planet Earth. It's like it's, it causes a lot of of, of 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 distrust, we don't have fear, so we don't have mistrust. We see everything in the form of love. Love is is how we operate. So it it was really interesting to uh, spend some time on Earth, just experiencing the the. the the fear, and in experiencing the fear, we also recognize there's hate, and there is uh, uh, hate, and that all is based on fear. You, you, if you don't have fear, you don't need hate. And the other thing is that there was such a thing of survival. We don't worry about survival. Everything is handled because we help each other, and we 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 take care of each other and so we're as we as i said before we're one big family and we we see each other in one big harmony we're one with not only each other but we're one with all of existence all the plants and the planet that we are on 
So if if on when you come to like Earth, you're helping the people. Uh, what do you do on your home base when you don't need to help others? Or what are you doing there? Just enjoying. Same it's as just... same as you talked about before with the playing and the singing and yeah, dancing. And... Yeah, and 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 then also what you would call meditating and, and connecting with the higher sources and to feel their presence. When you feel the higher sources, there is this feeling of calmness and peacefulness and and being taken care of. That doesn't mean that we don't have to take responsibility for ourselves, but it means that we we are provided with what we need. We just uh, and when we we get a message, we don't hesitate. We know we don't have a division of mind what I call heart and mind. There's no thing of, of conflict within our own selves. We just see that each moment presents itself with what we need. We have a need and it's met. We um, don't question. So looking at your home base now, uh, looking at the plant life that you mentioned, mm -hmm. what does the plant life look like? It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's some similarities and yet there's differences. The, the plants, um, we don't have, you know, like big trees like you see here on your earth. They're more, um, they're smaller and they also are, uh, things that they, allow us to to use them for food and when I say allow us to, we, we are very very conscious of the plants and we communicate with the plants we don't see the plants as separate we don't see them as inferior in, 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 in you know in the sense that no, they're just they're just something growing on the ground and we just stomp on them no, we don't do that. We see them as as living living uh, energies, and we we ask, like the Native Americans on your Earth, we ask, you know, to if we may uh, use uh, some of your uh, some of your existence here to nourish ourselves. And they are happy to to let us eat them, eat them, uh, because they they are being used, they are being transformed into a uh, a different form of life. Um, do you have animals in your home base? The animals are yes, we have animals, and. Uh, I wouldn't say them as pets in the sense like you have in your in your world. They're more um, they're 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 we love them and we play with them, but we don't. Um, they don't fight with each other. They they, uh, they they don't hurt each other, and they play with each other and they. Uh, they're like little children in a sense. They play with each other and um, enjoy each other. Okay, I want you to uh, move to a scene now where you're where you're with um, spending time with one of these animals. Mm -hmm. Three, two, and one, and be there now. Mm -hmm. And what kind of animal is are you with? Well, you would see. You, I could say it's something similar to well, there's a couple of them. I see one of them is kind of like a deer. It's mm -hmm. like your deer. It was smaller than your deer. Small deer. Yeah, and they they uh, <laughs> they uh, they have beautiful eyes, and they they uh, they're very they're very they're very um, playful. Uh, we learn a lot from their deers and how they play, so we kind of dance with them and they dance with us and uh, we, we really enjoyed them you know each animal has its uh, has its uh, teaching 
they teach us many different things, you know. And, um, you know, like, uh, uh, like, uh, like, um, and, well, they have also uh, similar things like dogs and cats. And, you know, they, they're, they're very playful. And they can be, you know, they can be, one thing about cats is, like on Earth, they can be happy, you know, they can be angry at one moment, and the next moment they can purr, you know, and they're, they're, they can trans, uh, transform their emotions very quickly. And so that was one of the things that the animals up here do. They teach us things like that. They say, oh, you know, each, each animal has its own, like, um, uh, gift to, to the planet. I see. Beautiful. Now, is there anything on uh, this planet that that you have there that is not on Earth? You've talked about the plants and the animals. Is there anything unusual about this planet? Uh, anything that you notice? I would say it's similar to the Earth in the fact that you have you have uh, you uh, you have. Uh, you know, mountains, and you have valleys, and you have oceans, you know, but it's not as, you know, um, it's clean. It's clean. Okay. There's, there's clean. There's not, what, you know, there's not, uh, when we travel, we don't use vehicles. Where, you know, we, we can move in our own, uh, you know, first of all, we don't have to go very far. You know, we don't travel around the planet like, uh, like humans do. Uh, so it's clean. The water's clean. We don't, you know, we don't use, uh, things that would, would cause pollution, you know, or, uh, things like that. Everything is, is used and recycled in the sense. And it, uh, everything, that's why everything, their colors are so bright, uh, and so, um, Vibrant. Everything is vibrant. When you look at a leaf of a plant, it's very vibrant, vibrant, and it also has. You can see its aura. You can see things like that. You can see its aura. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you move from, say, um, Britain to Oregon? How do you move that that kind of distance? Mm -hmm. First of all, we don't usually do that, and usually there is a, a, a reason given to us by, that we need to do that, and if we are uh, commissioned to do that, we are given the, um, the, um, what's the word I want to use here, we are given the, um, uh, the the ability to move from that planet to your planet it's like we 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 just know how to change our energy and we can move through space you may think it's magic but there's a way of changing your your um, your form we don't have the same density although we can get into the density of of a human form and not look like a human, but we, we can be as dense as a human, but normally we're not that dense. And what is your, what is your relationship to time compared to the way humans perceive it? We don't see time. We don't see time. That's okay. why when you ask about a time period, we don't see time. Right. Yeah. I was, I meant the time period for the people, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, and how long, uh, well, if you don't have time, um, when does this life come to an end? Or does it? It, 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 it okay, to, to answer that, you, you see that when you have decided that you have learned enough in the form you're in, then you, uh, can go to uh, 
you can transform into a different form and you can be in a different reality. Don't, I see. You don't have to be uh, a leprechaun. You can be, you can actually be uh, from another planet and a being that looks like that planet that lives on that planet, a being that lives, that lives on that planet. I see. Just like humans, you know, they can be, take on other forms. They can be, you know, they can, they, you know, the thing about Earth, though, is that there are certain things that need to take place. If you commit yourself to Earth, and uh, with the, with the, uh, if your soul decides you want to be on Earth, there's a whole process that you go through before you can graduate from this training ground. So it's, it's a big commitment. To be on Earth is a big commitment. Okay. And you take on many different forms. They're just not always human when you come on Earth. There's many different forms that you take. Uh, can you talk about the, some of the different forms? Well, you can be an animal. You can be, you can be a, a part, part of nature. Or? Part of nature. Okay. You, you can, yeah. You, it, it, there's no, you know, it, it's it's all learning. It's all learning. That's all the universe is. The Earth is, just has certain types of learning. One thing you have here is that some planets do not have is that you have the emotional, you, you feel, you, you, you deal with pleasures and pains and, and that all planets and all beings from other realities have those, uh, can, can do that. They don't have those experiences. Uh, tell me about, now, going back to this life as Pepe, um, mm -hmm. Tell me about one of these times where you got caught or where you were seen by a human. What happened? Mm -hmm. Well, it was in that same time period and uh, these people were moving across the country and they, they caught me. Uh, Are you talking I, about the same family in Oregon? Like, no, it wasn't the same family, but it was the same area. Okay. And um, they they saw me in a tree, and it it kind of and I tried to blend in, but for some reason they saw me, and they just stared at me, and they 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 didn't know if I was. Uh, 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 an animal, because they'd never been to this part of, of your country, and so they they didn't know if I was an animal. I didn't know they didn't know what I was, and they tried to coach me down from the tree, and uh, they they didn't try to hurt me, but it it, it, it they kind of uh, <laughs> it, it kind of they didn't know if they were going. Um, out of their minds, or if they were, you know, what they saw was really what they saw. And because of my ability to change, I changed forms a couple of times, and that really spooked them out. And uh, I used my ability to speak to them through, uh, you know, through sending them uh, their mind messages that know what you're seeing is real. And I, I was able to connect to their intuitiveness. And that was a big lesson for them. And, uh, they, but they can, they knew that they, this was something that they had to be very careful about if they told other people, because other people would not understand that. But it was, it was, it was, it was not, for me, it was not a scary thing. You see, I did not get fearful, therefore I did not create fearful things. Okay, and I'm guessing you just did you just have fur at that time? You're just like and you didn't you would did not have any clothing on? 
That's uh, right. Okay. Um, so that's why they thought more likely I was an animal. I want to ask a question now about, um, so if there are not really leprechauns in this part of the world, here in Colorado, um, can you talk about a time where um, one a being similar to this had an interaction with Devin, maybe leaving something for him or whispering to him or whatever, mm -hmm. something similar to that, like you spoke about before? Has he had an interaction? No. He has not? No, his whole, his whole thing is... Uh... He, his information uh, comes from a different source. It's more from spirit, direct? And more spirit, more, more spirit. More beings who have been on earth as, as humans or in human form. And uh, talking about elementals, uh, say for example, so he, here we are in uh, a little bit north of central Boulder. Um, are there elementals around here? Occasionally, but it's not. Um, it's not What's around here? Any kind of. Uh... Well, not what I'm familiar with. There, there is other forms, um, not the form that I had, but there is other forms, but um, they usually don't interact with humans. That's not their function. Their function is to help uh, nature. Okay, so your peppy would interact more with humans than these... When I was assigned here on Earth, yes. Okay. So when you were assigned elsewhere, what would you do? Well, I... Most of the time I stayed on my planet. Although I did go to other planets and had other missions in other planets, but most of the time, the reason why they sent me to Earth was because of, uh, they saw that this, this, especially this part of the, uh, of the world, the United States was, wasn't that old. It was, you know, it was still young and there was purity here. And so we wanted to see if we could help the Native Americans in their way of keeping this pure over here. Well, that didn't, you know, that it finally got a little tainted from from other things. But um, that was that's why I was sent was to help the people, you know, in Oregon to to realize that there that there is help. And there's love here, you know, and my message was love in a sense, that you are loved, you are taken care of. And they came from a part of the world that that never experienced it in, in, in the way that uh, I presented it in a sense. But because this was a new world, we wanted to keep it... Uh, I shouldn't say it's a new world because Native Americans have been here and other beings have been here before. But with the Europeans coming and other parts of the world coming here, uh, they was bringing their um, their uh, their culture with them that was not the highest culture. Uh, 